hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel it's peter sunday m where we talk about tech and everything else so a lot of people have been asking me um how my, how my journey went to become a data scientist so this video is for that and uh please guys give me a comment in the comment section people have been asking me that uh, some people love my personality so say so they've been saying i should react to i like music some people know that i like music uh, I reference it when I speak, uh, so they were saying it will be fun if they see me reacting to certain things. I uh, also have reacted to some videos of people talking about tech, so they were saying it will be fun if they will see me reacting to certain things. I also like to, so maybe I will just do a playlist of me reacting to certain things and me reacting to and the videos I do for tech, because I also do vlogs. So I will have, uh, there is a lot that's going to be within this channel itself, uh, different personalities of me, They're like things that make me, make my personality. I think that uh, if you enjoy that, Hit me, tell me what you, I like hip hop. I like um, fiction movies. I like uh, fiction series. I like a lot of things. But if you have something you want me to react to, just tell me in the comment section. But yeah, with that said, that's not why you're here. Let me tell you how I became a grad data scientist. Because that's also important to say I'm a grad data scientist. So uh, it's also important to say because there's a difference between a junior and a, a grad. No, it's a grad, then a junior. <laughs> Let me not mess it up. It's a grad, then a junior. Yeah, so there's a difference. And there's an intern. But I don't know when that, that nigga goes in. But yeah, for me, guys, it was uh, quite a long journey. But um, getting here was a long journey. But uh, let's start education. Let's start education. I think a time step will be good there, education-wise. So in school, I did applied mathematics and computer science. First, I was major. I majored in physics and uh, computer science but fortunately for me i did uh, applied math as an elective so I, I just saw i want to pivot to that i liked that more so i did I, I changed then i did computer science and applied mathematics as a double major i did that um i don't want to lie most of my um, what is undergrad was theoretical that was one of the issues that I had starting up, not knowing which path I want to take because software development was one of the things that shine light on us. That it was like is software development or you're doing networking. There were two things that we mainly focused on at school: networking and um, software development. So software engineering and stuff. So for me, I knew that those things are not things that I want to get into, but. Uh, I did them, nevertheless. Then I graduated. Then I did an honors. My honors, I did. Um, I did an honors in computer science. So in that honors, we are mostly focused on as well in networking and cloud computing. But fortunately for me, when I did my research, my honors research, it was on machine learning. So I was uh, creating uh, a digital assistant that. That is going to uh, translate South African language. We are com going to communicate with it using South African languages. Uh, so I did that research. So that exposed me to machine learning and its capabilities. You know, when you read articles, you read research papers. Of, uh, like, there's a lot that machine learning could do that I didn't know. I wasn't exposed to machine learning. That was the first time when I was doing my honors and research. That was the first time I like went into machine learning and understood it, what what is happening here but there was also that is also theoretical so that's one of the issues as well so fortunately i got an internship where in that internship i was um system analyst then no 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 i was a system administrator because there's a difference i was a system administrator um yeah for the company i was in in that company, uh, as did say, it was a long journey, guys. So in that company, I, I got to do some data, uh, some data analysis, working with Excel and stuff like that. I wouldn't call myself a data scientist. In that, that's a totally different thing. So, but I was working with Excel. I learned some things in Excel. So uh, while I was doing that, I saw, no, this thing is not for me. Uh, I want to progress in this field of machine learning. Sorry, guys, I skipped something. After doing my honors, I, I completed my honors, then I did a master's degree. I'm currently doing it. It is 
chowing me but but there's a conversation for another day but i did my master's degree uh while doing the master's degree i got the leadership or internship to go and do uh the system um administrator thing so i'm doing my master's studying and i'm also working okay fine we move uh i saw that thing wasn't for me it wasn't challenging enough it was uh yeah so i i applied i got a leadership I got a leadership from a company called Mindworks, a very great leadership. Uh, it helped me a lot. What I have seen is that it's hard to break into the industry for data science or machine learning because as I'm currently in the industry, I see that most companies are relatively new in the space. They are trying to adapt these things. The reason being, there are not laws put in place currently. Uh, South Africa just did uh, regulations or some laws based on AI and what AI can do and what you are allowed to do with AI as a company. But before that, there, there are laws that are preventing them. You, there are data science, but they are data science is different. You can work with it, but if you're working with AI, as I do, it's a um, different thing. So there are, not, there are not a lot of spaces, there are not a lot of spaces and a lot of, there are opportunities, but not now there are future opportunities get that it's a very important field to be in exciting field in my uh humble opinion what i've seen in the industry okay so i get that leadership that leadership was for system development still programming um so i left my internship to do a leadership yeah so i left my internship to do a leadership sometimes if you want to go where you want to go you gotta be any position where okay you you gotta be willing to risk some things you i risk some things i said okay i'd rather take a salary cut than do this thing for a long time because the promise in the leadership was if i finish the when i finish the leadership they're going to give me placement they're going to place me somewhere i know for some people it takes quite a long time uh, it's different within people the sponsors for their leadership are different but it's something great very useful and i would recommend it to somebody it's called mindworks academy i was in mindless academy days consultation but i was in academy okay then i did an ownership uh we learned a lot of things c sharp databases uh we learned uh web development then they did a course for us in uh, data science so they did a, a course in data science that's why i knew okay um this i like because I was I always did software development. I understood software development, but it didn't appeal to me. It wasn't something I could do it, and uh, yeah, I could do it if I want to earn money. But it wasn't something that oh, I say I want to be this. And I also had like I also had love for machine learning from my owners and my masters because it's in machine learning, particularly deep learning to be precise. So they did a course for us in data science. They were showing us how to manipulate data, use machine learning. Then I understood, okay, I like this. Then I got an interview. Um, yeah, I got an interview to be a, 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 a Java dev. Let me tell you, that's a conversation for another story. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I got <laughs> practicing for interview, guys, is important. <laughs> it's important. As you know, now I'm not a, a Java dev, so you know how that went. That went, I'll do another in, another video to explain maybe how to conduct yourself within an interview. Maybe it will be helpful, like what I have learned and uh, yeah, what I have learned and the things I used to do that were not really good. Yeah. So then I got another interview uh, to join a, a graduate program in which the one that I'm in. But I got an interview to do... Um, back-end development because i had computer science background and i have apps in my profile because I, I developed apps before i had them in my profile so when submitting these things the leadership people they said okay these people said okay uh we got a position for uh a, a back-end developer would you okay take that one they gave me interview for it i went there but when i got there what i kept on talking about was machine learning not as much about java and uh, system and uh, app development i was talking about machine learning so that interview ended they called me up again then they said we would like to have another interview with you we had an interview in that interview they asked me would you mind joining rpa 
robotics I, I didn't know what rpa was at that point they asked me do you would you mind joining rpa i said uh what is rpa i'm not familiar with it they said robotics um because what you are explaining it seems like you have you would be more suited towards that that field compared to back-end development but you applied for back-end development i said okay i uh, don't mind doing rpa in my head it was like okay maybe it's aligns with ai and machine learning so because they said robotics okay fine i get the position i get into the grad program everything starts well it went smoothly tell me guys if you want to if you want me to explain the grad program part because it's a, a year long thing it will take another video all right I get there, the program, whoa, okay, I'm introduced to RPA. What is RPA? Uh, it's Robotics Automation, RPA, R Robotics Process Automation. Yeah, guys, it's Robotics Process Automation. So it's different from um, AI and it's different from machine learning. They use certain tools that um, enables them to automate certain processes, but there are rules to automating that process. So now where I am, I'm in RPA. When I got in the grad program, I got in as a, a, an RPA dev. Okay, so I, I get I got in an RPA dev. So I'm doing. So now I'm doing RPA. Uh, forgive me for that. The, my phone is switching off. I'm doing RPA. Um, okay, I'm in this thing. It's, it's cool, but it's not as necessary where I want to go. Like my first meeting, my when I got there, the first day we, we got a chance to meet and um, the CIO of the company. I'm very ambitious. I, I told the CIO I want to be one, two, and three. In that one, two, and three, also mentioning AI, machine learning and AI within. Fortunately for me, he also had the love for AI and machine learning. Cool. So we are afforded the opportunity to choose a project that we want to do within the grad program. So there was a project within the data science team. There was another project that uh, was in um, was in development, system development. For me, it was like a golden goose. I said, okay, fine. I'm doing RPA. It's not necessarily where I want to go, but fortunately for me, I got this opportunity. So I went there to do the, this project. Okay, they give us a project. It's something that hasn't been done in the company. We are not enhancing anything. We are just starting something from scratch. So then I learned how to do uh, machine learning in application because it's different from research wise tools and certain things and the methodologies are the same, but in application is quite different. It's quite different in application. Uh, what I've learned about being a data scientist, you have to interact with stakeholders quite a lot, of which you need to have confidence for that. You might be a, a person that talks a lot and a person that is opinionated, but trust me, talking to stakeholders requires uh, different teachings. Fortunately for us, we are given uh, a Udemy license to learn, uh, to learn communications to learn uh, how to speak to stakeholders how to write emails the necessary questions to ask and we are afforded to get mentors and the guy in the data science team the seniors they are very welcoming so he really taught us what he told me that was most important is understanding what questions to ask and when and why that's that's important when what and why why are you asking this question when is, is this the appropriate time to ask this question? You don't want to confuse the people in the room, but you and you don't want to seem like you're not prepared. So you should prepare yourself, understand was what data scientists mostly do, at least in my company and my field where I met, they take use cases from business. So they interact to business. So, most likely you don't know what is happening within that business. So you need their senior to tell you what's happening and the problem they are facing. That's what we do, guys. That's what we do. So that requires you to know when and how. But I'm in the phase of being a data scientist. So I get there, I fell in love with this thing. They give me certain time to do a course. I do a course uh, in data science. I get a certificate. Uh, then they give me the project. Now it's hands-on. 
the, I did some other courses, but the main one was for data science and machine learning. Did one for Power BI, that's also important. Uh, did one, oh, I also did one for RPA, but since we are here in the data science, I want to focus on that. So I did those courses, are very helpful to them because they taught me a lot, uh, a lot of things. Uh, very important. I can recommend it to people if they'd like. Yeah, but you can also check my LinkedIn. I posted the, the certificate. So now where I'm at, I'm doing a project. In that project, we are required to, to talk to external people, not from the company, to request data that you are supposed to work with. What I learned this guys, um, Excel is very important. In, uh, where, in my first job, I used to work with Excel, but it wasn't as deep. Like cleaning data is probably the most important thing after talking to stakeholders. Like getting the right data, and cleaning the data, asking the right questions for you to be able to get the right data and clean the data is very important. Because when you get to the machine learning part, it makes it easier. And when you get to the visualization part, it makes it easier because you know what you want to see. Like, especially with these AI tools that are, are here now, it makes the job much easier. But being knowing what question to ask and how to ask that question is probably the most important things that you could have in your toolbox. And that comes with experience. Fortunately for me, I was taken and given to the field and said, okay, these are the tools that we have given you, see what you do. So currently I'm in the program. It hasn't ended yet. Why I call myself a data scientist more than a, an RPA dev, I went into the program as an RPA dev, but I call myself a data scientist is because the projects that I'm doing at work and I'm currently busy with, then I have been busy with for the longest, for the bulk of the grad program is the one for the data science. Uh, it's not as much for RPA because I was vocal about the fact that I want to do machine learning and AI. So they said, okay, you got here as an RPA dev. We understand you want to be something else. At the time the interviews were conducted, there wasn't a position for what you want to be. So now there is. So we are going to migrate you to do this, but you also have to do some other things in this team as well, in the RPA team. So I work in the RPA team and I also work in the data science team. Since I want to progress and be a data scientist and I do the bulk of the work in data science, hence I call myself a data scientist. I am a data scientist and I do data science work. So yeah, my day to day involves those things that I have mentioned. And um, yeah, yeah guys, what I can say is if you fearful of getting in this field, just um, find someone that will mentor you, one. If you can't, just ask someone on LinkedIn what their day to day is. You will see that the Python programming parts and the states parts that people fear the most are not um, the biggest part of this, the, the data science thing, are not the biggest part of it. They are very important. They are very important because you need to understand the data that the machine gives you. But the stakeholder management, the understanding, the diagnosis of the, the problem at hand is also important. And if you get a mentor and you get someone that is uh, willing to teach you, you can get in the field. And the, the, the Python thing, there is Stack Overflow, there is ChatGPT, there is Copilot, there is, there is a lot of things that you can use to maneuver that as long as you know what you want to ask. So yeah, guys, uh, that's my journey of becoming a data scientist that I am now, a grad data scientist. Uh, yeah, still in the grad program, as I stated. If you have any questions uh, and if you feel like I left something out or you need me to explain some things, I did Python. Oh, I forgot to say I did Python at school, so that was easier. I was familiar with it. I also did it. I'm also doing it in my master's. I'm working with it. So that was also an easy thing to, to do. If you feel like I left something out, Tell me in the comment section. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, we'll talk there, guys. Uh, if you want some more videos or some more um, elaboration on a certain part of portion of my experience, I can talk about my first job and what I was doing specifically and how it was it. 
Now I can move into my second one, the leadership program. How was it? I can move to this job and explain start to finish the great program. Uh, but yeah, guys, um, thank you. Thank you for tuning in. See you in the next one. Peace and love.